Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for September 21st, 2018. It's a Friday morning. We're going to close out this week strong. We're going to head into the weekend strong. We're going to get the word of God this morning, and it is the word of faith that we, that we live by, that we receive. We are living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We've been studying a series entitled Standing on a Word from God. Will we get a word from God? And we stand on that word until it comes to pass. It's only a matter of time before we see in our hands what God has revealed in our heart. And this is how we're supposed to live. So this is part 18 of the series. We've been studying the life of Abraham. We're going to go back to it today. Part 18 of the series. And the, the title today comes in the form of a question. And the question is, are you convinced as a believer? Are you really convinced? Are you convinced of what God has called you to do? Are you convinced of what God is telling you to do right now in this season? Because faith is what happens when you truly get convinced. And now you're going out. You're launching out to perform what it is that you believe that God called you to do from the foundations of the world. You have to get to the point where you are fully persuaded, where you are convinced like Abraham was. He was ready to kill his own son. And, and that's what we'll pick up today. So we're in Genesis chapter 22. We've been looking at this for a few days. We want to go back to it this morning. This is what the Bible says. Genesis chapter 22. After these things, God decided to test Abraham's faith. So God said to Abraham, Abraham, he said, yes, Lord. He said, take your son to the land of Moriah and kill your son there as a sacrifice for me. This must be Isaac, your only son, the one that you love. I want you to use him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I'm going to uh, show you. you. You just go and I'll tell you which mountain. So in the morning, Abraham got up, saddled his donkey, got his servants together, got his son together. They cut up some wood and they, they headed out for the land of Moriah. It took them three days to get to the area. When they got to the area, Abraham looked up and through the sermon, he knew which mountain he was supposed to go do the sacrifice on. And then this is what he said. He says to his servants, you guys stay here. Me, me and the boy, we're going to go up that mountain and we're going to worship. And then me and the boy, we're coming back. Now, he knew what God told him. He knew exactly what God said. I'm supposed to kill my son. I'm supposed to burn him up as an offering. But he also got a revelation of what it was like that, you know, the, the promise that God has given him is locked up in this boy. And there's no way that the promise is going to die on that mountain. So I don't know how this is going to happen, but I know this. I got a revelation. I, got, I am convinced. I'm fully persuaded of this, that me and the boy, we're going up and me and the boy, we're coming back. And that's what I want to really key in on today. That's how we're supposed to live with that. We are fully persuaded of what God has already revealed to us that it is already done as far as God's concerned. So what does this mean to you today on this Friday morning as we seek to close out the week strong and head into the weekend strong? I have two things to share with you, and I want you to open up your heart now to what God is saying. You ready? Here we go. Two things. Number one. You were born destined to live out God's plan for your life. Now, you were born where you were born. You were born when you were born because of why you, you were born. You are not a mistake. You, you are in this world because of God. And, and he sent you into this world. God does nothing with, without planning it out first, right? God is a purposeful God. God sent you to this planet on purpose. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3 and 15, Amplified, that which is has already been. So just take a moment. You might be on a train watching this video, in your car, driving, going to work, you know, maybe drinking a cup of coffee in your kitchen counter, wherever you are, just look around for a minute. That which is, everything you can see right now has already been, the Bible says. And then Ecclesiastes 3 and 15 goes on to say, and that which will be, uh-oh, that which will be, that which will be has already been. So everything that will be, everything from the time you were born to now has already been, and watch this, that which will be from now to the time that you die, from the, to the day that you die has already been mapped out, has already been. For God seeks that which has passed by so that history repeats itself, Solomon said. God is looking. God mapped out your whole life before you were born. Rewound the tape and press play the day you were born. And so now when he's looking at you, he's looking for what he mapped out. He's looking for what he saw. He's looking for you to, to play out uh, uh, his purpose. He's looking for the manifestation of what he planned. And he planned to do these things in your life with you before the world began. So the Bible says that God looks, he is seeking that which has passed by, what he already saw, so that history can repeat itself. So that history can repeat itself. Or so that his story can repeat itself in your life. God is looking for what he planned when 
when he looks at you, he already knew what was going to happen on that mountain. He already knew. And so he was looking and he was looking for what he planned. And Abraham didn't come up with the plan. Abraham had to discover the plan. See, God's plans for your life are already done. They were finished before you ever got started. Let, let me say it this way. I'm at I'm in a, my home right now. So so this building and, and wherever you are, if you're looking at a building, the building could not be erected. Matter of fact, in most cases, in most cities, you can't even start the building project until you get the plan certified. The building could not be erected un until the plans for the building were finished, not in process. They had to be completely finished. And like that, God did not send you into this world until his plans for your life were already finished, were already certified. Glory to God. I mean, so he got everything approved by himself. He swore by himself because he couldn't swear by anybody greater. And he sent you into this world with certified plans already done, already finished. So now you're in this world. So we are God's handiwork. God sent you into this world because you're his plan. You are his handiwork. You, has, you are his masterpiece. Ephesians 2 and 10 says we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus. God made us new people so that we could spend our lives doing the things that he already planned for us to do. That's Ecclesia, I mean, Ephesians 2 and 10. Think about it. He says God made us new people once we're born again so that we could spend the rest of our lives doing what he already planned for us to do, what he already mapped out for us to do. So we don't get to choose our purpose because God chose our purpose before we were born. Purpose cannot be decided. Purpose must be discovered. So, so Abraham didn't choose to leave uh, uh, Ur of the Chaldeans. No, he was called by God into his purpose. Abraham, Abraham didn't choose to go to Moriah and kill his son. No, he was called by God to, uh, into his purpose. And so what he did was he received what God said and he pursued it by faith and he was only seeking to do what God told him to do. And this is the life of faith. This is how we are supposed to live. See, faith, number two, I only have two points for you this morning. Number two, faith is not about you coming up with something. Faith is about discovering God's plan and then attempting to live it out in the earth. As a believer, faith is, is a journey of discovery. You are discovering like Abraham did. Lord, what do you want me to do next? Faith is about discovering what God already planned for you to do. And then your journey is to walk it out in the earth. See, many Christians come up, they come up with things on their own. Remember when I was uh, teaching the parable of the sower and, and um, I think it was a thorny ground talks about people that just chase after the lust for other things or whatever they come up with in their own heart. They have competing priorities, competing desires because their life is about selfish desires, what was birthed in their heart instead of what was birthed in the heart of God. And unfortunately, many Christians come up with stuff on their own. They, they, they come up with selfish desires, things that were birthed in their heart, even if it's a good thing. If it wasn't birthed in the heart of God, it's not a God thing, right? So they come up with selfish desires and then they, they pray. They find some scriptures. They lay it out before God. They say, in Jesus' name, and then they say, God has to give this to me, and they call that faith, and that is not faith. Faith is not about you trying to get God to put a yes on your plans, to put a stamp of approval on your plans. He already put a stamp of approval on his plans before you were born. Faith is about God trying to get you to put a yes on his plans. Faith is about God trying to get you to align with his will, not the other way around. It's not the tail wagging the dog. We, are, we don't get to tell God what to do. He's God. He sits on the circle of the earth. Faith is about us receiving and responding to what God already planned. Faith is not what happens when you try to convince God. Faith is what happens when God convinces you. When you get so convinced of God, when you are fully persuaded like Abraham was. Abraham was so convinced that he was ready to kill his own son. He was so convinced that he was ready to set his own son on fire. You know why? Because he was fully persuaded that some way, somehow, I don't know how God is going to do it, but some way, somehow, I don't know how God is going to do it. But me and the boy came up this mountain and me and the boy are going down this mountain. He believed God. That's what happens when you are fully persuaded. That's what happens when you are fully convinced. My question for you this morning is, are you convinced? You're called and commanded to walk and live by faith. The question is, are you convinced? 
Are you fully persuaded? Do you know what God has called you to do? Have you opened up your heart to God's plan? And as God reveals things to you, are you so convinced that it's going to happen that you will do stuff that seems crazy? Uh, stuff that makes no sense that you will do what God tells you to do even when you don't have any sense realm evidence to support it even when people think that you're you're cuckoo for cocoa puffs you have to believe God at the risk of looking foolish being fully persuaded that what God promised he will perform in your life in the earth before you die this is how we're supposed to live my question for you this Friday morning is are you convinced Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want us to lift up our voice now and speak something over our life. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. I am the just. So I live by faith. I live by every word you speak to me. I live by everything you say. And everything you reveal. Concerning the things that you already planned. I choose to do what you say by faith, even when I don't have any sense realm evidence to support it, and even in the face of opposition, I am fully persuaded that what you have promised, you are able also to perform. And more importantly, I am fully persuaded that you will do it, that you will do it in my life, and that you will do it before I die. I declare this by faith, in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. There's a subscribe button on the right hand side of the website. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. If you don't know uh, or uh, if you know someone who's not getting these messages, please share this with them and, and share, the, share the link. Uh, it's Friday morning, so on Fridays, I like to remind you about the podcast. You can go to the Apple iTunes store, search for Rick Pena or Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries, and you get the podcast, subscribe to that. Um, I want to tell you about the app. You can go to any app store, just search for Rick Pena or Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries, download the app. The, the website is RIP Ministries, R-I-P Ministries.org. The blog is todaysword.org. Everything we have, we have for free. Everything we, we just give away, we want to be a blessing. We want to sow the word into your life. Sow the word into your life. Sow the word into, the, into your life. Now, if this ministry is a blessing to you, you want to partner with us, fine. We do do things with being a blessing around the world. And if you partner with us, you're going to be a partaker of the grace that's on our lives. As you head into this Friday morning, as you head into this weekend, final question, I'm going to repeat it. Are you convinced? I mean, are you really convinced that God is going to do? First of all, are you convinced of what he said? And then if you are, you got to be convinced that he's going to perform it. If he said it, he will do it. If he promised it, he will make it good. Walk into this day and walk into this weekend fully persuaded. God bless you.